Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do something very, very exciting. I ordered some watercolor supplies from Jerry's Artorama online and the box is finally here. So we're going to go ahead and open it and take a peek at what arrived. I also ordered something from eBay or a few things from eBay. So we're going to go ahead and look at that too. It was my birthday last week. So these are a few things that I ordered for myself to celebrate. If you are new here, please check out my other content and subscribe if you like what you see and find value from the videos. The first thing that I ordered from Jerry's was this Turner watercolor set. I have heard a lot of mixed things on these watercolors and I just had to try them out for myself. I think I paid $20.99 US for them as they were on super sale when I got them. They are currently listed at $22.99, and Jerry's has a list price of $202.10. Now, I'm not sure if that's just a ploy to get people to think that they're getting an amazing deal on these paints when they pay about $20 for them, or if they're actually worth that much. I'll be doing a video on these paints in order to demystify them a bit for us, so definitely stay tuned for that. These paints are manufactured in Osaka, Japan, and have been compared quite openly to Holbein, another Japanese company that produces watercolors. Holbein is a lot more expensive, but a lot of professional artists love and swear by Holbein. Maybe I will eventually get my hands on some Holbein colors and we can compare. Now, most of the information on the tubes and in the box is Japanese, and I don't know Japanese, so I can't tell you what all of this says, but the pigment information is listed on the tubes. 13 of the 18 colors are single pigments, which honestly is pretty good. If you are new to watercolor, most artists do prefer single pigment watercolors as they mix well and are a bit more versatile. The colors included are Pyrrole Red, Permanent Scarlet, Permanent Gamboge, Permanent Yellow, Permanent Lemon, Olive Green, Thalo Green Blue Shade, Sap Green, Turquoise Blue, Thalo Blue Green Shade, Ultramarine, Maya Blue, Dioxazine Violet, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, and I guess the obligatory Ivory Black and Chinese White. They come in a relatively nice cardboard container and at first glance would make a pretty good watercolor gift for the artist in your life. They do have an interesting little poem on the front which I find a little bit corny, but anyways, I'll let you guys know how I feel about these in a little while after I test them out. The next thing that I purchased at Jerry's was this core introductory high chroma set. Now I had originally wanted to purchase just a few individual tubes, but they were sold out of the green gold, cornacridone gold, and cobalt teal, which are the colors that were high on my list. They were all included in this set, however, so into my cart it went. Ultimately, I'm glad it worked out that way because let's be honest. These small tubes are plenty considering all the paint I have, and I get a few more colors to try. Core's parent company, Golden, has been around for a while, but they're actually pretty new to the watercolor game. Core watercolors are known for their flow and vibrancy, which may be related to their own patented paint binder, Aquasol. I have a lot to say about this brand, so I'll leave that for an in-depth review after I get to know these paints a bit better but I am so freaking excited to try these. The colors in the high chroma set are admittedly a guilty pleasure. Although not super practical, from the swatches I've seen from other artists, these are so vibrant and striking. Otto Kano and Denise Soden both have reviews on this set and they definitely enabled me a little bit. Arit Langraf also has a few videos on core watercolors and her taste for color is remarkable if you haven't checked her out yet. The tin that these tubes come in actually also functions as a palette, which is really handy and a nice touch from Core. I'm not sure if they intended to do this, but it's really working out for them. I've also seen other artists use magnetic watercolor pans and use the bottom of the tin as a holder for their collection. Honestly, it's pretty innovative. This set comes with quinacridone magenta, transparent pyrrole orange, quinacridone gold, green gold, cobalt teal, and dioxazine purple. I really want to see how some of these compare color-wise to the Daniel Smith versions. It should be really interesting considering I already see some similarities in some of the pigments used. The tubes do have all the pigment information on them, and this set does contain a little pamphlet with all the colors that Core produces, which is handy, and that'll go in my swatch book. Gosh, I have a lot of swatch cards to make. 
Next, I have this swatch card from Windsor & Newton. I do have some paints by them, but I'm not sure I'm giving the brand a fair shake. I got the paints that I currently have from them on eBay, and they are, well, old. I need to delve into some research about how the age of watercolor impacts their use, so if any of you know about that, let me know in the comments. They definitely still paint, but I ordered this stock card so I could see all of their colors and all of their glory. Windsor & Newton is arguably the most reputable and globally available watercolor brand. I actually don't know a ton about these paints, and I hope to get to know the brand a bit better. One of my favorite artists, Louise DeMossi, uses Windsor & Newton almost exclusively, so I have definitely wanted to continue working with them and testing them out. Windsor & Newton was founded in London in 1832, so I've definitely been around for a while. From my point of view, Daniel Smith is giving them a run for their money within the watercolor industry. Availability continues to be a very big factor globally for both of these companies. It should be interesting to see how the market changes in the coming years with two of the largest, most distinguished brands growing and becoming more available. Anyways, this thought card features the entire line of 109 colors. I also have the Daniel Smith thought card. I recorded myself swatching on that and I will try to find that footage for you guys and I can post that as well. In terms of dot cards, I hate to say it, but I like this one better. Daniel Smith dot card was kind of messy and had paint everywhere. I love how neat this one is and how no strings of paint are flying off the page. I also just love the little boxes that the dots come in. It just looks so neat and tidy and I'm excited to swatch these. I know that Daniel Smith dot cards are hand poured. Is poured the right word? Hand dotted? Hand dotted. I'm not sure if these are. Honestly, it looks like these were done with a machine. I'd be super impressed if these were hand dotted. All the pigment information is right below the color on this one, and that will certainly help and serve as a nice reference in my swatch binder. The card does have a bit of information on the back. Apparently 80 of the colors are single pigment, which is nice, and 106 are permanent for artists to use, which is just a fancy way of saying that they have good light fastness with ASTM. I explain a bit more about light fastness with my review of the White Knight St. Petersburg review if you have yet to check that out and are interested in learning more about light fastness. I'll link that here. The last thing I purchased was this set of Daniel Smith paints on eBay. I had the winning bid of $30 US and I paid about $6 for shipping I think for this set of 6 paints which I thought was a pretty good deal. I actually only had one of the colors, Rhodonite Genuine or Rhodonite Genuine, which I will sell or give to a friend to use. The next color, Amazonite Genuine, has been on my wish list for quite some time and I'm always super excited to add to my Prima Tech collection. Rose of Ultramarine is included and is of interest to me. I want to see if it has the same delicate granulation as the traditional Ultramarine. Indian Throne Blue is next, and I believe it makes my first tube of Indian Throne Blue. I do find myself drawn to dark and moody colors, and this qualifies. Next up, we have Cobalt Teal, which will be really interesting to compare to Cobalt Teal by Core. Then we have Cadmium Yellow Medium, which looks to be pretty similar to the Hansi Yellow Medium, which I'll show you guys in just a second here. And finally, we have Quinacridone Coral. I love Quinacridone Rose from Daniel Smith, so I hope I love this lighter, more orange version just as much. Overall, the colors that I purchased from Core and Daniel Smith are relatively bright and quite similar. Let me know if you would like to see a comparison between these sets and if you'd like to see their respective mixes. I have seen other artists get great results by mixing other brands with the Core colors as they tend to bleed and flow in a unique way to create a distinct blend. So the last thing I'm going to do for this video is just kind of flip through my swatch binder. I know I have the Daniel Smith dot card in here, so I wanted to show you the colors I got in their respective swatches. On this first page here, we'll be able to see the Amazonite Genuine and the Indian Throne Blue. The Amazonite is a Primatec color. If you are unfamiliar with Primatec, to me they're part of what makes Daniel Smith such a compelling brand. They are made from what I understand to be well-sourced minerals that are mined from the earth. I'm not sure of any other watercolor brand that does something similar. If you guys know of one, let me know in the comments. Here I'm just pointing out the Indian Throne Blue so you guys can see what that looks like. And here we have the Cobalt Teal.
The next one here is that Rose of Ultramarine and it's on the bottom right hand side where my thumb is. And also on this page we have the Rod and I Genuine. And here we have the Quinacridone Coral, which I became even more excited about because it looks very vibrant on the dot card. Last but not least, we have the Cadmium Yellow Medium Hue. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up the binder so you can see that one in comparison with the Hansa Yellow Medium. They are a pretty similar color. I would imagine that the Cadmium one is going to be a little bit more opaque. And you can kind of tell that even with the dot card there. So that's going to conclude my haul video for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please go ahead and click that subscribe button down below and make sure you hit the bell. And it will let you know when I have new videos out. Thanks guys. Bye.